Hey guys, welcome back with another video with Linksy. I hope you're having a lovely day. So today we're going to be going through the first 20 turn uh, with Queek on Legendary. I'm going to show you um, the ideal way to get a strong economy and get high tiered units within the first 20 turns and set yourself up to be able to conquer the lower regions of um, the old worlds at the lower end of this uh, World Edge Mountains down here. Um, we're going to go to Mount uh, Arachnos all the way down to the Lost Plateau and eventually we're going to capture Karak Zorn. That should happen around turn 16, turn 17, according to how it plays out with regards to the AI spawning armies in Granite Massive and Mount Arachnos. Now, to keep in mind as well, since we do have Karak Oru down here and we do have Karak Apex up here, there is an absolutely viable strategy which, if you guys want, let me know in the comments below and I can give you a turn turn guide on how to get Karak 8 peaks at tier 5 in turn turns. It's a relatively difficult fight and it's a bit advanced for most players however it is very possible and on lower difficulties it's much easier to do so but capturing Karak 8 peaks puts you in direct confrontation with uh, Grimgor up here and most importantly and more dangerously Torgrim which will be a bit of a problem to deal with at that point in time. Also, Karak 8 Peaks is not as well defined as Karak Root, which only has essentially two paths passing through. Now, keeping in mind that you do have the Tomb Kings on both sides, and you have the Lizards, and it's the only pathway, so they're going to really want to get in. As we know, the Skaven have the food mechanic, and that's what we're going to be abusing. The food mechanic is going to be really useful, as it will help us to get Karak Root to Tier 4 from Tier 2 really easily through the uh, new mechanic of Abandoning. Usually you could do this with uh, Rebellions, but using Abandoning also works. And thanks to the new mechanic of Public Order, it kind of balances the... Um, balance it itself really effectively. We do need to keep in mind we do have the debuff from Karak 8 Peaks which is just minus 2 public order in all provinces. It is a big debuff in itself if you do not eventually capture Karak 8 Peaks but at the start you can definitely deal with the rebellions very easily. So let's get started. The first things first, we will go in the research tab. As you know there is no research available. Uh, ideally you do get um, the ferocious plans up because that plus one recruitment capacity is going to be really useful but eventually you also want to have the task massacres platform so you get the ruthless plans going because that plus one food and eventually this here plus one public order will kind of start neutralizing the effects of that you do start with Queek, and Queek has a really, really useful ability uh, with the update. He can recruit as his faction two extra uh, uh, where chieftains. Okay, so oh, we actually have a really, really, really good um, uh, chieftain start. So it, initially, the first things you need to do is recruit all of these chieftains, right? And why I'm why am I saying it's a good start? Because if you look at uh, Sternrick here, and we go up to Disciplined, uh, many people should know by now already that Discipline is one of the best traits with armies, especially in Skaven, that the plus two leadership can make or break your army, and that plus two melee attack will really add a lot of umph to your troops. Having three um, and eventually four chieftains is going to really make quick a strong early game so first things first you move all the way to here um, just slightly down from the bend and um, you should be able to get to mount arachnos next turn and absolutely easily you're going to recruit three uh, slave in slave slingers over there and you're going to then next turn put the chieftains into um his army. They do add plus one public order bonus, but you're not going to be using them as that. They are quite strong in Queek's army, and especially if you get them all disciplined, they're going to get a really, really good uh, start. Karag Arud, you're going to go on the economy, and you're going to build the Rattling Warrens, which is going to give you income, but most importantly, growth, casualty replenishment, and scaving corruption, which is going to be really useful with regards to getting those um, menace belows. That should be turn one, and I think that's mostly it. Oh yeah, before I forget, um, this is actually... Oh, we don't have any more money left. That's absolutely fine. We are, however, going to destroy that. That's going to give us 3k gold, which we're going to really need, as we did spend a lot of money on recruiting the chieftain. So we need to take that. We've taken care of everything and, and turn. At this point, there is possibly an army here. Um, no, so their, their army is down here. Sometimes they do recruit an army here uh, over the end turn, so we're going to see what that happens. Um, but now the main focus is going to be this fight. This is going to be the hardest fight in the uh, early game. I have a way to cheese uh, the uh, dwarves down here. 
they do have a small military presence. Karak Zorm will have a big army when we get to it, but there is a way to cheese it in a really, really good fashion. Now, you should not put the chieftains in his army right now. What you should do is go to Marm Tereknos and attack the city, um, sieging it. And you're going to say, oh no, the balance of power is very much in their favor. You can beat this fight. I have done it before and it's absolutely doable. They don't really have that many troops. And if you do micro your warp lightning cannons, you're going to do very well. But what we're going to do is we're going to encircle. And we're gonna leave it there for a second. We're gonna grab our um, chieftains and we're gonna stick them inside our army. Now, each of them is gonna be really useful because they are gonna add a lot of umph to our army. Why do we add them now? Because if you add them over there, you will not have the movement rage to capture Mount Arachnos in the allotted time frame. Now, we're gonna look and the balance of power is suddenly in our favor. You can actually fight this manually and you'll do absolutely fine. And you should fight it manually, uh, but for the purposes of this um, uh, guide, I'm going to skip the battle. Like I'm going to fight it, but I'm not going to show the battle, so it's not too long because it's already quite long. I would do suggest putting this up to five minutes below. You say why? Um, it will reduce our food, and we do want 80 food, and I'll explain why in a second, why we want 80 food. But that little bit of use is we're going to crush their army before they are a problem. Um, now that said, they are down to that bounce of power and I'll see you right after the battle. And we're back. So, um, if you see any hero name difference, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> don't think too much about it. It's not like I had almost finished it and I realized I made a simple mistake at the start. So I'm gonna really highlight what you really should do in the next step and then we'll move on from there. Okay, I was maybe at turn 13 and I lost the turn because I made a mistake now. So don't do the same mistake I did. Um, oh, we actually got the... Yeah, we'll just give him the banner. So over here, uh, you sack, which is, again, what I did earlier. The problem that I did earlier, which I uh, ended up lo costing me a lot, is I moved here instead of here. I... for. I don't know why, but moving here closer to Mount Arachnos as much as possible is going to give us more movement range next turn and is going to make us closer to Granite Massif, which we will really need to capture on turn 4. That is imperative that we do so. Anyway, getting back to Queek, we need to give him Root Marcher. That 10% movement range is going to be absolutely important in our strategy. And we're going to use Tail Weapon, gives 3 melee attack and 4 weapon strength to our chieftains. And they're going to be absolutely fine and doing well. Now, with regards to research, we have Ferocious Plants that is available. We'll start researching that. You do not need to build anything else in Karagor Root. In turn 5, you're going to prop possibly destroy it and Karak eight peaks is now the time to build the scavenger and the where is where is where is it the murder holes we're gonna get those to get a bit extra food and making sure they don't get discovered it cost a bit of money but it is well worth it now Rudgush brain basha can do one of two things one he can jump over towards great massive because he's terrified of your army or two he can go and capture lost plateau both of which are great opportunities for you if he goes to great massive you're gonna get a little bit extra food when you sack and loot the place or if he goes to lost plateau it's gonna give you a little bit of a jumping uh, spot towards Karak Zor, which is the aim of this tutorial. Anyway, we're gonna end the turn and we're gonna end there. The mistake that I did was I moved away, so there was less movement range and we inst instead of getting all the way up there, we only got till here and, oh, we intercepted him even, so we're just gonna finish him off. Uh, we're probably only getting one food from this. We got 800 gold from just killing him, which is really good. We didn't get any food. Oh, he wasn't even worth one chicken wing. But that's fine. Um, that's actually much better because it, it has less of them running around. Now, we just uh, do this. Your outer resolve, you're going to be absolutely fine. You're not going to lose anything of importance. You're going to sack and your general moves back. So now, this little bit extra is going to be so important for the strategy that we are going to try and import above and beyond that we're all already at 79 food it is important to use as much food as possible uh, as little food as possible because it gives you the opportunity to settle character root next turn essentially after you 
take Great Massif, we'll have enough food, so we could sh should start disbanding these buildings right now. So on turn 4, we can start dismantling Nestler, and on turn 5, we'll get uh, our Colonel Ver Kergorud will be on Grand Warren. Now, over here, I would say recruit Clan Rats, but since we're disbanding that, uh, so early i uh, just go for uh, skaven slaves you could go skaven slaves and spears they have a little bit extra melee defense uh to be honest we will go for that because that is what you need them for then you need them to hold on as long as possible now with regards to leveling him up you're gonna go for ancient cunning that extra ambush chance you're gonna need to get to 30 and it's gonna really help and with regards to these boys you're gonna give them to elusive that melee defense will make them being uh, hit less they're already small making sure that they get 12 melee defense from here and an additional 12 from here that's a 24 melee defense means they're gonna be hit much left less now the traits that we got this time around are disciplined we got the same guy i creek we got strong and we got tough we did not get cunning like last time cunning gives you that little bit extra um well they leveled up twice i did not realize that and oh yeah because we fought in the underway we fought in the underway that makes a big difference as well and we are in good place so and turn we're destroying the building scaragoru that's going to give us the money we need and it's going to give us the extra things we need uh, just on a side note i took the opportunity the fact that i had to restart uh this so many times if you auto resolve maram teraknos you're gonna get a very very good result either way you don't need to fight it you're basically just gonna have damage on these clan rats they'll be almost dead as you can see now we can take grant massive this turn he has a unit that is uh club gore spitter so it's going to be one of these where they um just going to bend over and die we have essentially a really strong outer resolve army you want to uh, you could loot and occupy a tier three and then you recruit the catapults from here but it's going to take longer to get uh cargo route to the tier you want so just loot and occupy and you still have granite massive at a decent level you get clan pit over there now at this point you're gonna want to recruit a i would suggest either the warlock master warlord or master assassin you want to look at something that has super high uh, loyalty and if you can while well at it get so after taking great massif um you are going to fix this and you're going to start this uh, abandoning cargo route because you do have the food you need to recruit it to uh, tier four now make sure you don't have great massif selected but rather you have cargo route selected you're going to recruit lord and you're going to see what lords you can recruit you can uh usually go for master assassin warlock master warlord because the gray seers always have less loyalty why is loyalty important loyalty makes sure that your units your army does not rebel against you and turn against you and so we're gonna hope and try to get a loyalty that is above five because so if you try to disband a lord with under four four and under loyalty they're gonna turn against you now as you can see over here there are a number of decent traits there are the opportunity to recruit, recruit this tactician he has a decent chance of having high loyalty this uh warlock master down here the strategist also has decent loyalty and a really good trait that extra movement range does help and over here we have Sneaky, which has extra loyalty up here. I'm going to go with the Warlock Masters because I'm going to need uh, someone to uh, rune well for me. And this is bad. Making sure I have Karago Root selected once more. And then we're going to go and select. Where is he? Kirk the Mad. He's recruited out here. This will be abandoned next turn. And the good boy up here, he's going to get an additional three of those. He himself will finish a... Uh, uh, ancient cunning at this point and these uh, bad boys that he has fighting for him will get elusive so they're a little bit sneaky stabbier and better now you're gonna get driven by hunger uh, for that little bit extra battle loot and for the one turn we're just gonna get two extra food from this we're almost at max food but next turn we'll take that and don't worry food will collapse so have they settled lost plateau they have not settled lost plateau but they also do not have an army here since we killed their army up there they did not recruit too I would also recommend getting Nestler because essentially speaking you want to get clan barracks you want as many chieftains as possible to do the plan uh, that we have in mind we're gonna end the turn and turn five we're gonna have Karagorn Rude ours at tier four now you need to keep in mind that this is really important if you get a rebellion make sure you deal with it before you start recruiting outside the city I may or may not have done that accidentally and ruined the entire thing Anyway, we're going to recruit this, tier 4, colonized, 
we are starving for food which means we're gonna come all the way here we're going to disband uh, Skirk the Mad who has seven loyalty so he's absolutely fine now we have the money first building that we build okay we're gonna come here you do not have the funds to build this are you fucking serious what okay fuck it we're not building that Jesus Christ there should have been enough funds for it maybe do that thing they eventually yeah takes all the money out damn all right uh build rattling warrens and where is it or build obsidian thingy magicy over there uh, and rattling warrens you need the obsidian for that little extra gold and maybe you can start trading now it's actually a good idea to see how people are with you the silver host they actually seem to be no they don't want to trade they're actually destroying Libaris over there which is interesting anyway your army is in decent shape we don't have enough money to build everything we want because it's quite early I did ruin the population surplus that I had but such is the way of life we did need the construction cavern almost at all costs there because it is imperative we get those play clock catapults as they are going to be our backbone this is where we start uh, sacking Mount Arachnos and starting taking those sweet sweet loot from there really recommend you move at the edge of the map we're still in our territory so now we can be able to sack come here replenish sack come here replenish we need to do it for as long as this is still uh, in construction now we're gonna end turn we're also gonna get a rebellion in three turns so it's gonna be absolutely perfect we got a rebellion mostly due to the fact that we have um left the settlement you get instability uncertainty and your entire land doesn't like you anymore um it's absolutely fine to leave your settlement especially this early in the campaign they have more food and the food is gonna be great i'm gonna come here oh this is why hmm no no it's actually not that i don't know why then okay go settle there's a reason why because usually it's built absolutely fine as you can see food food yum yum uh we take that and we suck now we're gonna get our money back up and it's gonna be great uh for some reason this guy is not moving at the proper rates uh that's fine we're gonna move him there and that's gonna be fine victory achieve over the green skins multiple times second settlements yada 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 he will level up soon wait they are leveling up as well you want blade master now because that melee attack makes sure that their attacks hits more often eventually you want to get scarred veteran one fervor and deadly onslaught and of course at level 12 you want to give them the bone breaker which well it's a bone breaker now we have a little bit more money we will build a task masker and hopefully that might even stop the rebellion from happening at all uh, at the moment the rebellion will happen in three turns still and that's all we need we don't need any more apart from the construction cavern uh actually we need that eh. okay let's build that hmm okay let's build that sorry okay ah we don't have enough money no we need money yeah let's build that that gives us the 300 extra food and income from all provinces in this region will go up by 75 percent rebellion will happen we'll use it for money and at this point i'm freestyling because my plan just went out of the window completely with that bloody thing costing so much more than i thought it would i don't think i got an I think when I've, I I tried it, I, they used to have a little bit more of an army up there or down here than they did, but it's absolutely fine. We're currently just farming Mount Arachnos for food, which will help our settlements uh, stabilize a bit more as well, so we're going to need that. Rebellion will happen, uh, yes or no, it doesn't matter, we can kill it. Our army is quite strong. Essentially speaking, right now, you can just finish off Mount Arachnos and just start moving down, but that is all good as well so one more sacking will happen there will not be a rebellion this turn and sack sack yes yes money money me me okay good sack there you go 
And I'm not entirely sure what the hell is happening with him, but sure. Move over there. We're gonna have to do with these guys, uh, but it will be fine. Corruptive, and they should level up next turn. The rebellion will happen in one more turn, and no, the rebellion happens still in two turns, so it's stabilizing. Okay, good to know. Um, where is this? So, obsidian trinket maker, we don't need any of that shit. Uh, let's build that and just be done with it. Uh, we're gonna need money though. Hmm. Mighty warrior champion. We're gonna need three thousand or four thousand because each one of these costs quite a bit. Okay, we hopefully will be able to get a lot more from that. Um, yep, 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 yep. Clan Molder. It's also a good idea to try and confederate all the other clans whenever you meet them later on in the campaign because they will give you a lot of territory and a lot of armies to move around. I really suggest you take the corner, so solidify it and get yourself a high level unit. Okay, so it's going to rebel in two turns. Uh, loot and occupy and raise one settlement. That's going to give us a little bit extra money. I'm not entirely sure what, what the problem is, because we were doing this just fine in all of the other auto-resolve tests that I did. Now, we could sack, we could raise, we could expand an empire, and we could occupy. Occupy means we'll kill them, which maybe they don't deserve it. So I'm just going to sack right now, and uh, let's come that way. And uh, since we're not going to make it there anyway, let's occupy as well. Because that gives us the... Okay, there you go. We get 1,500. Uh, win one battle, that's fine. Faction destroyed. That means less problems. We'll get Draftmaster as well as you get all for Seeker. Wait, there you go. So they're actually much stronger now. Uh, we'll replenish. Mount Arachnos is not really a big deal. You could build the uh, Exotic Animal Trader, which is nice, but what you want is Rattling Warrens, because that growth is going to be really useful. We're not going to... Be, um... Wait, let's see. How much do they cost? So they're like a 1,000 each. Yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be okay for next turn. We'll be okay, and we'll get Clan Rats over there. At this point, you should be something similar to this and getting ready to move all the way down that way. Now, what you could also do right now is, as soon as you get him there, recruiting those troops, you should have, if we look over here, um, what? What, what? Recruit Lord, Warlock Master, he will be back in two turns. Okay. Two turns. Yeah, that's, that, that makes sense. So when that guy is back, just re-recruit him and send him to the last plateau. And Quick should be ready and coming with his own troops. Uh, Karagonrud will rebel in two turns, but that should be fine. Okay, you are fine. And turn and turn. This game, uh, this guide hinges on us having those play clock catapults because then if you get them you're pretty much set play clock catapults are actually the strongest unit in this cave and roster in my opinion as they're so easy to get they're cheap and you don't need any dlc for them now we're gonna get the rebellion next turn that is fine carnival imminent rebellion so what do we need to do we need to loot sack we need to capture the settlement of which one Quatar, which is this one. Ooh, and we're at war with them because they attacked us. Because, hey, why not? When the hell did they attack us? This is bad news. And they don't have any troops. That's fine. Now, we're going to get the rebellion. Um, I could start recruiting this turn. I could definitely start recruiting this turn, but realistically... Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Granites, uh, you upgrade there. That's fine. We have 7,000 gold. We can afford this. And uh, you recruit. 
Give me more trophies. Yes, yes. Uh, no, you're gonna start recruiting those those. Okay, so one two three you are gonna get yeeted and This one selection and I'm gonna yeet you as well, and I'm gonna just get four of those And that's gonna be it for now We're gonna start upgrading these because you're gonna need them especially if you want to get to tier 5 You're gonna need a lot of rattling horns That's fine rebellion will happen. It's okay. Oh, no, because we have the construction and the growth. Okay, we need that again. Enter. Pesti lost. We, they shouldn't attack over the end turn. But what we can do now is recruit an army, attack, and Creek should be part of the fight and deal with it. I wasn't sure where he was going to get recruited because he could have gotten recruited here or there. But it seems they spawned over there. It's absolutely fine. We're going to recruit... Um, where is he? Strict the Mads. He's going to be here. Next turn, we'll attack. They have play close. And he is in the area of influence of Queaky Boy. And it's going to be fine. And... Yep, that's fine. Everyone getting their uh, stuffies. We're going to get our troopies. And then we're going to just start marching all the way down to do the uh, Karak Zorn down there. And we're gonna take it. So, and turn. They should not move to Cargo Rude. And Queek should be able to recruit his army. And it will be more everyone. Put Extrick here just to slow down the assault in Cargo Rude. Because he'll have to attack that. And the army in Cargo Rude is big enough to take it in, uh, in there. That is fine. They have a big army. And Overrun them. not much damage was done. He actually got a lot of kills. Uh, always, what we do is enslave. We're back to 55 food, and quick be the bigger rat. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Black pendant. All right, a mass of treasury of 17,300. That means we're gonna lose a lot of money eventually. We didn't manage to build this in time. There's nothing to do about it. Back tunnels, build it. You're going to need it, especially since they're attacking us. You get Root Marcher and you run this way. You boys start getting Scarred Veteran because you are going to need that health for what I'm about to do to you. Uh, we're going to run all the way here as well and we're going to ignore this bit. We're not going to charge our units in there because we don't take, want to take attrition. We want them to heal up, as, but especially these guys and these guys. That's going to be our main force. And on turn 11, you should be in this position. You should be building up these buildings. You should have uh, some money in the bank. And overall, you should be doing uh, kind of okay. Now, it's all, if you want extra money, build that. That warp token stash will help. Their armies aren't really going to do much as they're not going to really notice you at this point since Grimgore is just doing his thing back there. If they come to try and assault Cargo Root, we'll have Warp Lightning Cannons because we are upgrading the settlement to four, tier 4 defenses. And you're going to have Warp Bomb, you're going to have all the tools necessary to deal with them. So don't worry too much about it, but you do necessarily need Karak Zorm as that is a really, really important settlement. It has gold and it is a second wall settlement which you can get at tier 4, which is what we're going to try and do. So this guy still has... Um, one more turn before we do anything. We're gonna just jump over this bit because, you know, attrition is a pain in the ass. And we're just gonna go here. In two more turns, we should get to Karak Zorm. Now, their army is gonna be absolutely crazy. They're gonna have a crap ton of dwarfs, but we're gonna be okay. The one thing I didn't do is I didn't recruit a warlock master, and I should have definitely done that. Um, I should have added him to the Queek's army, but it's fine. He might actually catch up with Quick before we, as we attack the settlement because he moves pretty fast. You want that guy because he gives you extra movement range. Now, take everything. Sacking settlements is what you need. Granite Massive is upgraded. We don't have the money for that. But we do have the money for Rubbish Pit. And we can start working our way through that side of the tech tree. Now, the battle that's going to happen now with the dwarves, it's cheesy. So prepare your biscuits, you're gonna need them. The faction destroyed now. The orcs are going ham, it seems, in the Badlands. 
orcs, 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 orcs. They're doing their thing. Stance raiding, got the lost plateau. Uh, so we can't settle it. Jesus. We don't have the money to settle it, that's fine. Uh, do this track. Um, so it cannot be one, cannot definitely be one. This is two, this is two, this is two. So, and this is two, this is, that's uh, two. It could have been two yellow. Doesn't make any difference. Um, you get here and we're moving slowly that way. Um, it seems we're not getting, what the hell happened to our money? That's not gonna give us enough money. We're still making 500 per turn. Under Empire. That is strange. Very, very strange. I mean, we're losing a lot of money from this, so might as well, if we didn't have the money, we will disband him and we're back to 900, yeah. That's absolutely fine. No, this guy is costing us 200. Each one of these costs quite a bit to maintain and hold, so keep that in mind. Having him in the army will help giving us the extra movement range, but it is not necessary to be there. He also has Warp Lightning, uh, warp lightning which will do some damage to the dwarves, but dwarves have 25% uh, magic resistance. So it's not very important to have him. It just makes your hero run faster. So there's always that. Now, you will not attack him this turn. So wait. We can move all the way up to here, so on turn 15 we'll be attacking him. Um, wait, this needs 50%. And you heal. Just getting that little extra heal left for two turns. And we will then charge in. Come on. Scuttle start. Money is always a problem. Uh, war declared again? Damn. Okay, they're fighting the silver host. It seems we're gonna get surrounded by the Skull Krag. This campaign will be and end up being a Skull Krag versus the world campaign. Uh, uh, sorry, a Queek versus Skull Krag campaign. Okay, you go oh because he is full okay um we're not gonna need those this band this boy and go there he's not gonna have any movement left he is actually and we're gonna come here and see what the dwarves have the dwarves have three massive armies um that's gonna be interesting to take out Especially these two, we can kill them easily because they're outside. Um, because we should have more than enough uh, ability to ambush them outside. This, the internal one is going to be a bit harder. But with enough catapults, you can blow anything to pieces and be absolutely okay. It's... It's fun and better if Mount Arachnos, the bloody orcs, take Lost Plateau, because then you capture it from them, and it saves you a lot of money, and it's an addition of few levels for your troops, but that's absolutely okay. We more or less have arrived at our destination with the troops that we want on the turn that we want. Turn 16 is when I had taken it on all of my practice troops, so let's declare war on these guys. And they're much stronger than us because they have three armies. But ambush, if it doesn't work, we're fucked. Okay, it worked. Kill. It's nothing really, really much of a big deal. Um, replenishment. And... Okay. We can kill this really easily, but... Break Siege. Hopefully we have enough movement to go kill him. Ambush this. And we have killed this as well. Our food is where we want it. And now we fight this fight. I'm going to continue siege. 
because now I need to do some small changes. First thing, uh, loyalty for Nuke, fuck that shit. Uh, not right now. Uh, we're gonna give him a little bit more of damage. Now, either damage or armor. In this case, damage is really good. Uh, armor is not gonna be much of a thing. You could give Paranoid Defender, Verminous Valor is gonna be really, really important in this case. But you could also go to Scarred Veteran. Verminous Valor is going to make a lot of damage to the Dwarves and help our boys run around. So we're gonna give them all Paranoid Defender. And this bad boy gets one mobility and he's gonna get reload time. Actually, wait. This gives us the extra ammunition we need. And that is going to be so important. That little 8% extra ammunition is going to make the siege from a really, really tough siege into a relatively uh, easy one. So, you say, how the hell are you going to beat so many dwarf warriors, quarrelers, and, and etc. We have slave singers, we have warp lightning cannon, and we have four play claw catapults. Let's fight! So here we are inside the battle, um, hopefully Rayland is good with us, we do need, okay, he was actually really good with us, we're gonna need every bit of Winds of Magic possible. This is the way I place my army, I put these guys forward, they're all slightly damaged, but don't worry too much about it, they're gonna be absolutely fine in dealing with all of this. This guy is going to give them that little bit extra ammunition, and that might be... Um, you know, it, it, that extra 8% extra ammunition means a few extra shots uh, instead of 22, I think, get 24. That, that little extra shots is, yeah, 8, it's because 2 each. Alright, let's start. First things first, always blow the 4 towers and you will, I mean, that's the first thing. Now, the reason why you put your chieftains and stuff in the front is because they take the arrow towers and they get missed most of the time. This four tower should essentially fall in two hits from these each, and then we'll blow that one up as well. Now it's important to blow up this fourth wall, because that's where we're going to do most of the damage. This wall will... bye-bye. Now, I'm actually going to save the ammunition for these guys, because we're going to need it more, and you um, will be the one that will fire towards that. Warp Lightning is a little bit harder to arch, so we're going to use the Warp Lightning to deal with everything else as of now. That thing is going to die. Okay, you guys do the Wokemoli thingy. Kind of wish I had regeneration, but I don't. You can't give Skaven everything, can you? Okay, Fort Walls. Now, on the fort walls, destroying that is going to give you a little bit of an excess where you shoot all your ammunition. They, I actually fought this with all three armies inside and one, but it's better if you kill the, ar the other two armies outside as well. It gives you that little bit less to kill. My catapults had like 600 kills each uh, from this little trick. Fort wall is falling down, and this is why you use uh, the warp lightning. If, if you still have it, it's still useful because you get to do this. Okay, you get there. You guys come here. Wait, uh, dodge the bloody arrows. We're gonna dodge the arrows. And we're gonna get you um, on this hill there. Now, uh, not you. You come over here, and we're gonna start. You see that? You shoot at it. We're gonna start using the uh, warp lightning as much as we can. We're gonna have a few shots of it. Still, only six per six value, but still, the value is small. But that's twenty-four we killed in one shot there. These guys are in position. Okay, first. Let's see the best angle. Okay, hold. No, 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 flip. Forgot there are archers up there. Quarrelers, go away, go away. Okay. Shoot there. 
if you turn on the timer to off it's actually a bit better but this is the ideal thing you could do all right so they are dead um now let's aggro them you send those guys in um i'm gonna start doing damage to the archers And once we do this, they are going to send every single dwarf they have to try and hurt us. But they will start losing, obviously. Because if we're sneaky sneaky enough, hopefully they, yep, there they go. And look at the amount of damage this is going to do. Guys, you're making me look bad in front of the viewers. Hit. There you go. This guy is getting hit and all of the dwarves are just dying. Like, there's nothing else left to do in their life. And these guys also get this. Which does insane amounts of damage. Okay, he needs to die. Helm of Discord reduces... Oh, I got a, got that. Okay, and give him that. And all the Dwarf Warriors are pretty much dead. So you can see how well this works, especially if these guys are full health, because we didn't have to fight those armies outside. But it's absolutely fine. Now, uh, halt. Kill Torgrim, hold fast. And meanwhile, I am going to start... Uh, they don't have anything to waste over there. Okay, just kill the guy. Get you guys rested a little bit. And you use your magic on them. I mean, this guy has 200. And they still have so much of their ammo left. They're sending more in. Now, quick problem here is you might lose one of your chieftains. Don't worry, recruit him again. This guy needs to die as soon as possible, though. Quick getting a really nice hit there. Shoot there. Yeah, just absolutely melting them with those hits. Play Clock Catapult's best unit in the game for Skaven. Because they're easy to access, they're early game, and they just do so well. Uh, and yeah, that wasn't even a direct hit, but Fairman is better, and and uh, go back there and shoot. Uh, and okay, Quick is taking some damage. Okay, kill the rest of them. Now I'm gonna need you. Still have 47 minutes left, so we're doing fine. We've killed most of their troops, and their general is going to die. Now, hopefully, these guys get on top of each other and it will be done. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop you guys from shooting because we're gonna need all that ammo. Keep in mind, ammo is indeed um, balance of power, and you need all the balance of power possible. To defeat this guy okay he's dead that means that they are really on the um, losing side right now now if we manage to get those guys occupied I might need to get these guys here and we'll move on our Skaven slave slingers uh, to try and deal some damage there for us there is a Tain but we'll I'm confident he will die really quickly these guys are not doing well you keep shooting them he's almost 100 kills again every single kill counts so don't worry too much about it yeah all of you just get in there uh, we're getting more of these bad boys all of these are pretty much broken uh, and if he gets the thunder is in it's it's absolutely fine these guys moving uh, can I actually hit the Thunderers back here? I think I can. Because they are at a really bad angle for themselves. Okay, that was not a good shot. 
Okay. Stop. Uh, long beards. They're the pain in the ass. Why aren't you guys fighting? Kill that boy. Okay, they have guns everywhere. What is this guy? Okay, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh god, I don't want to lose this guy. Come on, get out. And shoot there. You go in there. And okay, they're shooting. Neutralize that. Okay. Thing they're breaking. These guys. Did they actually glitch on the wall? Okay. They kind of, sort of did. Okay. This guy is sort of still alive. They all have a little bit of life left in them. Um, I need you to go up there and kill that. Be useful. As your uses. Okay. Can we hit the Thunderers in the back? Because the Thunderers are essentially all that's left right now. Okay. We've gotten a hit in. Um... You know what, just destroy that wall if you still have ammunition. Uh, just go kill that. Keep them occupied. Uh, they're all running back. Yeah, this should be an easy GG now. Get these guys up there. Uh, the walls are about to fall. Guys, get off your storm vermin. Alright. Their morale should be breaking. Like any second now, their morale should break. If, even if they use too much ammo, it's gonna be. The end of them. And that's it. GG. That was a relatively fast battle. It's close, but we've taken out a lot of dwarves in one turn. I think that was essentially four armies of 11 to 12, 13 units each in one turn, and two of them in auto resolve. So, and this is on legendary. So. Just goes to show, Quick is strong. Chieftains, this little buff that he got, beautiful. We're at maximum. Unfortunately, we cannot do a tier five because we didn't have enough money to go. Uh, sorry, we didn't have enough capacity to get to tier five. You could sack and attack next turn again, but anyway, guys, you have ten thousand gold. You're gonna get more gold from this. Loot and occupy at tier four. And you already have the gold. Wow, this was this was a really lucky one. You can recruit more chieftains. Uh, you can build gold smelter. Important: build walls, build taskmaster's platform, and build construction cavern down here as well. You know, then this is the quote unquote twenty turn guide because this is essentially all you need to do to have a very solid start. Now, what do you do from here? Well, there are two options, right? I mean, you're obviously gonna get uh, the Lost Plateau, but your options are, you're gonna go against Orion's camp and eventually the Doom, uh, Tomb Kings up here, well, almost Doom Kings at this point. The other option is you're gonna go against the Lizards and go up this way, take out the Vampires and the Tomb Kings here, settle yourself with a really strong army garrison in the, uh, there's a castle over here, 
and once you have that garrison you'll be able to hold off against the badlands and protect most of this malice will die to snickage and eventually then you will be able to confederate the uh, uh the elves imric might grow strong enough to threaten you and kill snickage but then you can just go in and wipe him out you'll have enough weapons to do so now the step forward from this is start recruiting weapons teams right um you could skip building a construction platform down here as well you could go straight into weapons dump and eventually weapons burrow get those rattling guns going get this poison wind gunpowders and eventually warp lock jezails and poison wind mortars you could essentially do that that is up to you i would just recommend for now just go with more construction caverns because you'll get another warlock engineer there you are there if you want also you could go through the breeding stock up here all the way to laboratory so you get yourself pack masters and help with abominations the world is your oyster clan morse is dominant um your main problem now at least in this campaign is having to deal with these uh, orcs but keep in mind these orcs are at war with dwarves which you uh, actually another war faction and they're at war with the silver host silver host is relatively big itself and the tomb kings do not like people taking their land so any desert faction camry will come camry will stop camry will kill anyway boys ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions please feel free to contact me on discord feel free to write comments under the video or on reddit where you might see this as well I'll try to answer. If you think I could have done something better, please let me know and I will add a comment of any such in the uh, description to make sure people have a better way. I hope it was smooth. I had a little bit of a bumpy thing over here while recording as I kind of messed up a little bit, but that's on me. Hopefully in the final clipping you will not have this um, teething problem that I had. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. See you tomorrow, and if you're still watching, why don't you just subscribe? Thank you, and bye-bye.